If somehow you have never seen The Hunger Games, well, good for you. Now I saw it in theaters, and since it's now the 10th anniversary, I thought we'd take a look at it again, and I'm left with some questions, so let's talk it out. Now, The Hunger Games takes place in Panem, a fictional dystopian country where the wealthy elites prosper off the resources provided by the surrounding districts. And today is Reaping Day, the day where two kids from each district are taken to compete in the games, but we'll touch more on that later. First, before the reaping, we meet Katniss, who's out doing a little bit of illegal hunting outside the district bounds because someone seems to have forgotten to pay the electric bill for these fences. She's interrupted by her friend Gail, and they sit down for a chat about the day and have a snack. Here. Oh my god. Is this real? Has Gal tricked her with fake bread in the past, or is there some weird black market for counterfeit baked goods? Alright, well the girls are all dressed up, so let's head to the reaping. Now at first these ice shields look pretty normal, but once you look at them from the back, how exactly do they see you through these jam jars? Anyway, we start off with a video from the Capitol. And so it was decreed that each year the various districts would offer up in tribute one young man and woman. And by man and woman, they of course mean boy and girl, since they have to be between 12 and 18. The lone victor would serve as a reminder of our forgiveness. Or a more accurate description, we'll kill off 23 of your children each year to show our forgiveness. Wait. Now, the time has come for us to select one courageous young man and woman. Again, they're children. And being forced into something against your will really doesn't require courage. So they choose the names, Primrose Everdeen and Peter Malark. And I gotta say, for far too long, I thought this kid's name was Peter. You know. Peter. What? But uh, yeah, I stand corrected. Anyway, so the names get picked, but since Katniss's sister was chosen, she volunteers to take her place, which I'm kind of surprised they would allow, if I'm honest. All right, well, let's head to the train. You two are in for a treat. Crystal chandeliers, platinum doorknobs. Ah, yes, what a treat. To finally get to see why you live in absolute poverty and literally bathe in buckets. Well, they get to the train where they meet their mentor, Hamish. Embrace the probability of your imminent death and know in your heart that there's nothing I can do to save you. How can you not love Woody? By far my favorite creepy actor. So Hamish, the winner of the 50th Hunger Games, is also from District 12. And as his first actual piece of advice for the games, Katniss learns a hard truth. And to get sponsors, you have to make people like you. Not exactly her strong suit. So they arrive at the Capitol, get all cleaned up. We might need to hose you down again before we take you to Cinna. And Katniss heads to meet her stylist Cinna, who gets them ready for the tribute parade. <laughs> what is with the expressions from the crowd? Were they actually directed like this, or did the extras just go way over the top? Anyway, the chariots arrive at the front where they are greeted by President Snow, and can I just point out the incredible cast here? I mean, so far we've seen Stanley Tucci, Elizabeth Banks, Toby Jones, Woody Harrelson, and now Donald Sutherland. Well, after a very quick intro, they head to their living quarters, and the next day begin their first of four days of training, and then a meal with Hamish and Effie. Now, before we discuss that, why exactly is Effie even here? Does she have a meal with each district, or is this just to give her more screen time? Anyway, we find out that there are certain tributes who are considered careers, who train in special academies until age 18 and then volunteer. So while most districts are randomly selected and pull in children as young as 12, districts 1 and 2 are volunteering specially trained adults to go up against them. Can we say rigged? Well, the next day it's more training, and we start to see where each tribute is ranking. I'm also rather curious what exactly Rue has done to quickly improve her odds from 60 to 1 to 7 to 1. Well, with combat and survival training complete, they're now called in for an evaluation where they get to show off a bit. The better the ranking, the better the chances of getting sponsors along the way. Now, at the start, things aren't going too well for Katniss. <laughs> Thank you for your consideration. Look, I'm not a fan of these movies, but I love that part. All right, well, let's see how they did. Peter Malock, score of eight. Katniss Everdeen with a score of 11. Katniss Everdeen, the girl on fire. Oh. This girl is on fire. Now, although everyone in the room is happy with the results, President Snow isn't. She earned it. She shot an arrow at your head. Well, at an apple. Near your head. Now, the apple was in the mouth of a pig on the table. If someone punches you in the stomach, do you accuse them of almost hitting you in the mouth? Why do you think we have a winner? Hope. It is the only thing stronger than fear. Hope? Oh, give me a break. This has nothing to do with giving hope to those from the districts. What hope do the parents of someone like Rue have? This is all about entertaining those in the capital. After a quick interview with Caesar, District 12, you know her as the girl on fire! This girl is on fire! They get a good night's sleep, and then it's time for the games to finally begin. 50. 49, 48. Who begins a countdown at 50? So the beginning of the games is just an all-out war. 
some just trying to get supplies, some trying to call the numbers down, and some just hightailing it out of there. Well, Katniss grabs her pack, gets herself out, and finds a hill to fall down. As you wish. Now, as we head in tonight, we get some interesting information from Caesar, who's running commentary for us. I think I see an alliance forming. Now, what exactly is the purpose of an alliance? I mean, I suppose it'll help you for the time being, but you'll still have to fight these people at some point. And why do you want to team up with those from one and two? I mean, all you're doing is decreasing the chances of someone else taking them out before you do. The next day, Katniss wanders a bit too close to the edge of the arena. So to turn her back, they start a fire and guide her where they want her. She's almost there. Well, she manages to escape up a tree and after a couple failed attempts of getting her, Peter Bread suggests they just wait her out. And they start a fire, make a camp, and meanwhile, Katniss tries to deal with an injury she had gotten earlier. Fortunately, Hamish is keeping an eye on her and manages to get a sponsor to help her out with a salve that significantly heals her by morning. Now, Rue, who's also managed to find her, points out there's a tracker jacker nest right above the camp. Now, in the midst of cutting it down, she managed to get stung a few times herself, causing expositional hallucinations. Not only is it lethal, but the venom of a tracker jacker sting triggers powerful hallucinations. But manages to get herself a bow before passing out. She wakes up to find Rue has banished her up with some leaves and grabbed the arrows for her. As it turns out, she was passed out for a couple of days, and how the others didn't manage to find her in that time is just completely glossed over. Now, with Rue being the eyes and the ears of the arena, she informs Katniss the girl from 1 and the boy from 10 have been killed, but Pete is still alive, and allegedly down near the river. Meanwhile, the rest have set a trap with the remaining supplies, but Katniss has a plan. Now, this green stuff is gonna smoke like crazy, so as soon as you light it, move on to the next fire. Look. Go. You stay guard until we get back. With the majority lured away, Katniss prepares to take out some of the supplies, but finds someone else has their eye on them. Now it's all too easy. Okay, maybe not that easy. There we go. Well, as she heads to the last bit of branches that were to have been lit, she hears Roos screaming for help. And as it turns out, she got caught in a net, but neither of them realized that this was left as bait for Katniss. And as soon as she's freed, Roos killed. As a result of her death, riots break out in Eleven, and as an attempt to make peace, Hamish suggests giving them something to root for. Give them something to root for. Young love. As it turns out, President Snow isn't a fan of this idea, but allows Crane to continue with it. An announcement is then made. From now on, two victors may be crowned if both originate from the same district. With that and the info from Rue, she heads down to the river to find Peta, who has impossibly camouflaged himself into the rocks without even a seam. Nope, no way. They find some shelter, have some soup, yada yada yada. Morning comes and the capital has some supplies for them. The cornucopia. Each of you need something. Desperately. Now for those not keeping score, the remaining tributes are the guys from districts 2, 11, and 12, and the girls from 2, 5, and 12. Right off the bat, the girl from 5 snatches her bag and is off. And just as Katniss makes a run for it, she's almost taken out by the girl from 2, Clove. <laughs> Unfortunately, she makes a comment about killing Rue and Thresh, also from Eleven, overhears this and takes her out, giving Katniss the opportunity to escape. And after splitting up to find some food, they hear a cannon. As it turns out, the cannon was actually for Foxface, the girl from Five, who took some Nightlock berries from Peta that he wasn't aware were poisonous. Now to add a bit more of a challenge and to wrap things up, Crane introduces a new creature to the mix, a genetically engineered mutt. And I have to ask, is there any limit as to what they can do? I mean, it's one thing to genetically engineer a new breed that's traditionally born or maybe even grown in a lab, but somehow they are making fully grown biological creatures? I mean, look at this. With a tap of her hand, just two more appear. Well, they get chased to the cornucopia where they climb up and quickly learn that they've been beaten there by the guy from Two, who, after killing Thresh out of revenge for Clove, holds off the two of them for a bit, but eventually is thrown to the mutts. <laughs> Now thinking that they have won, an announcement is made and the capital backs out of the deal that would allow them both to win. There's only one victor may be crowned. Good luck. Now Katniss, aware they must have a victor, has another trick up her sleeve. Trust me. Together? Together. Stop! 
they get back to the capital where Hamish explains nothing good is going to come from forcing their hand. And we see Crane led to a room where he's locked up by himself with nothing but a bowl of those same berries. The two of them are crowned victors. They return to 12 and President Snow. Well, let's just say he's not happy with the outcome. That's it for part one. What do you think? Was it too harsh or too easy on it? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, bye for now.